tricked you. It was all my fingers. There's no pics involved in this intro music because, you know, no biasing the ears. Hello, um, me, Henning Pauli, for Timbertones. Really, 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 really cool. Uh, natural material picks. Uh, we've already reviewed 18, was it 18? 12? 18? I don't know. A whole bunch. Here, I got the box of the uh, Timbertones, the wood tones. Wood, I don't know what they call them. And um, they all have the tiniest subtle differences. But the video was very long and very boring because you just saw pictures of picks always compared to a reference um, plastic pick. And um, it was informative, but boring as fuck. So we're gonna try to do this in better. Better? Um, so, uh, well, I'll show you the setup, and then I'm just gonna play the different picks quickly, and also give you some comments on that. Um, I'm going to play this with my POS Swamp Ash Special with Narrow Fields. That is a beautiful name uh, for someone with a lisp. The Swamp Ash Special. Swamp Ash Special. It's difficult. Um, it's going through a pretty good cable um, into uh, uh, the whole Carl Martin board back there. But all that you hear is actually the Carl Martin compressor. Yeah, you can walk over there. Go, go show the compressor. Do you know where the compressor is? She doesn't know where the compressor is. It's the, thi it's the thing that says compressor on it. Bottom right. See that? It says compressor on it. And it's just going through the compressor. And then the headroom, which is the, in the top left, um, that's actually a spring reverb. Just for some nice reverb. And that's going, of course, into the Carl Martin Custom Shop 50 Mega Super Boutique Awesome Purple Monster Stack with 212 Vintage 30s being mic'd with an SM57. Going into, if you come over here, the Universal Audio 4710D mic preamp, which is then going light pipe into the Fireface 800, going into the Puder, and then go away now. So, we're gonna go, and I have it on, a, I have to say this, I have it on this, uh, uh, the um, in-between position here, let me take my plastic Jim Dunlop reference pick, it's a, I don't know, heavy, I don't know what they are, 1.14, I, I, I have no idea, heavy, pretty, pretty thick. Um, and in the front, it would sound like this. But I like it in the first middle... In the first middle... That sounds like some place in Mexico. Um, in the first middle position. Um, because you hear more high end. And high end is what this is all about. The compressor just spanks the living crap out of a sound. Nice. So what we're going to do is play some notes with the reference plastic pick. Because we all know and love that sound. But it gets better from here. So get that melt, melted, burned into your ear canal. So, flying in come all the different picks. And I made a little pick chart so you know what we're talking about. We have four um, shell tones here, which is shells, you know, muscle shells. I don't know if you call this abalone, but uh, mother of pearl, there is a difference. I don't, I don't know things. It's all pretty stuff. So we got four shell tones and um, four, I think they call them stone tones, um, stone picks, but incredibly beautiful stones. As you can see, there's like the green Arizona jade, the blue dragon skin, the bloody basin jasper, and the malachite azurite. Uh, as for the shell tones, we are featuring the mussel shell, the gold mother of pearl, the black mother of pearl, and the freshwater mother of pearl. And the freshwater just is insane. I don't think you can see this. Let's see, try to zoom in on this and, and, and see if you can see this in the camera. Is it focusing? No. Yeah, you're too close. So when I, when I tilt this, there's a shine to it and a 3D depth. 
You can't, so, you can't see that at all? Okay, well then, camera back on me. Just trust me that there's a shine to it and a 3D depth that's just beautiful. Now the question is, does your pick need to be beautiful? It's a stupid question. Obviously not. It could look like a turd, and if, if it sounds good, that's fine. But here's the thing. It's your connection to the sound. It's your connection to the tone. And if you feel good about it, you're playing better. Everything is about emotion and connectivity to the sound. I know that sounds metaphysical and ethereal and he's full of shit and he believes in God. But um, no, this is about how do I feel when I pluck the string? If I have something beautiful in my hand, I'm trying to make the sound beautiful. I know that sounds stupid, but it is true. This is what Timbertones makes money with, and rightfully so. So now, of course, you've forgotten the reference sound. So we're going to go again. And we've already heard the wood picks, but I'm going to go back to the wood pick once in a while. This is the wood, don't ask me which one. And the plastic again. Tiny bit harder in the attack, the plastic, so not as round. So we're gonna go to the stone, the Arizona Jade. The amazing thing is, the stone tones actually sound slightly warmer, and not warmer, but softer in the attack than the plastic, um, and as you will see, than the shells. So you'd think stone, that's a very hard attack, but it really isn't. Um, they are nicely rounded off, and, and the attack is pillowy, kind of warm and kind of, yeah, rounded off. attack is a little bit sharper in the in the high end I think compared to the other stone tones Well, if you ask me, if there is a difference, it is so incredibly subtle that you would never notice it in any situation other than this test. And um, which one of the stone tones you pick really depends on which color you like. Um, I think you, sh you can get them in, in packs of four or five or an, an, even a subscription, which is, which is very cool. They actually offer you subscriptions where I think every month or every so and so many, whatever, you get um, new picks sent for a flat fee. That's kind of cool. And um, so they are more color thing than the difference in, in sound, but a very distinct roundness in the attack, which is very nice actually. Um, so we're going to go back to the plastic. 
there's a little bit of a harshness in the attack, which, you know, maybe you want that, but let's go again. And the wood. Just for reference, the titanium. There you can hear a little bit of scratching on the low strings. I love these metal things, so we'll, we'll get to them later. Um, again, the plastic. We're going to go to the muscle shell. Well, first I thought these are very fragile and breakable, but they seem to be extremely hard, that's what she said. Um, and they, uh, they have a very distinct high end, which is beautiful for clean sounds. And they just look phenomenal. So again, the, the muscle shell. Strumming, you can hear that there's definitely, definitely little level, definitely more high end, and in the attack, a beautiful shimmer. So let's compare this to a uh, stone tone. Pretty clear difference, right, Leslie? You can totally hear that they are night and day. No clue she has. Very, very big difference. think that the gold mother of pearl has a little bit more high end but that might be due to the edge being less round and a little bit sharper so there's actually a little bit of a 90 degree thing going on here so the edge is sharper than on the stone tone so that might be that it's just scraping the string a little bit more <laughs> well, actually the muscle shell is, has more high end what do I know? Yeah, if I play legato, it really doesn't help. I have to actually pick. I'm an idiot. Water a little bit warmer again, but also relatively sharp. It feels lighter now, the wood, which well because it is. Um, kind of weird. I really like the the weight of the uh, the shell tones. So let's just go back and forth a little bit between the shells again and the. Oh, that's that's nice weight, um, and the stone tones.
So, my two cents? Well... So here's my two cents. Um, I love more. I, since I started playing Timbertones uh, picks, I really enjoyed uh, the wooden ones. I really like the copper. I have the big copper one, which is very cool. It gives you a lot of weight in, in your hand. And um, especially with the Strat, it's just boing! Um, out of these new ones, color-wise, I think the, <laughs> the, the stone tones are beautiful. The shell tones just... There's so much depth in that material. It's absolutely beautiful. Um, I can't tell you which ones I would prefer. It really depends on the situation. Sometimes that piercing high end of the shell tones might be too much. Um, I really dig it though. With this guitar and that amp setup and that compressor that really brings out that clean tone, um, it's just, it's to die for. No, really, I like the shell tones a lot. If you want a big round sound with a slightly rounder, not warmer, but just rounder attack, uh, the stone tones are for you. Bruno, what is going on? There's dogs running around all the time. So, um, way to go, Rob Wooler from Timbertones. Many, many more uh, different materials happening in there. There's a uh, horn and um, I think goat penis, they have that too. So we're going to look at... They don't have that. But they have leather. And I, I, I talked to a bass player friend of mine uh, from the band Kunaspi, and he's already, do you have the leather? Do you have the leather? Because leather apparently is supposed to be similar to the sound of your fingers, but you can play with a pick. Um, they have felt for ukulele and stuff, so really crazy shit. Obviously, the extremely uh, expensive. There's silver, then there's gold, up to a platinum pick for 5,000 pounds. So anything, any kind of natural material you can get, but not gold penis. Um, oh man, now I'm imagining that, like, uh, I don't, I don't know, I, I started something here. Okay, <laughs> hope you enjoyed this, and uh, digest this, maybe buy some, check them out, and uh, horn will be coming up next, I think, and maybe some other kinds of crazy materials. See ya.